What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who do not wish to identify with the gender? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Even bring your cats and dogs. This is going to be a treat. Today, we're going to be going into a new presentation entitled From Vague and Abstract to Clear and Concise. How to stop sitting on the sidelines watching everyone else make money online and how you can actually experience what it's like to have a highly profitable digital product such as an ebook course or coaching program. And the reason I'm putting this little or big presentation together is because there's a problem. Creative people like artists, musicians, spiritual mentors, very philosophical people, they're, they're having an ever increasingly difficult time making money online right now with digital products. And they just, they can't seem to know what to actually create and sell. And if they do, they can't seem to find buyers. And this is a damn problem because these, these, these people, these creative people, they don't want to have a nine to five job. They don't want to be locked in a pen. They don't want to be locked in a cube. They want to be able to express themselves creatively and they want to be able to get paid for it because we live on a financial planet. If you don't have money, you're kind of screwed. You're on the streets, right? So it's either make money doing something you love or make money doing something you don't love or be on the streets, right? And so this is a problem. And creative people, they think in, they think in very abstract ways most of the time. And, they, and I've had hundreds of phone calls with very creative people, think people who, who aren't super clear on their offer. And I've had interacted with thousands of these types of people in real life at different festivals, talking about their, their products and their offers and what they want to do online. And I, I was just part of the, the, uh, the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle where there was... Uh, 50 different, you know, vegans and raw vegans part of this uh, program all selling their digital products. And so I know what it's like to be on both sides of the fence. I know what it's like to not be clear in your offer. And I know what it's like to be crystal clear in your offer and actually have it sell. So today I want to show you how to get crystal clear on your offer and how to, how to go from abstract thought, lines of thought to having a really clear and concise product that you can actually sell and be very happy with while still allowing yourself to be creative and, and abstract as you like, uh, you know, within the product itself. Okay. So I'll, I'll go into that near the end, but essentially you can still be as creative and as, and as philosophical as you like inside your product, but on the outside in the marketing, when it comes to marketing, you've got to be clear and concise and right to the freaking point, man, right to the point. Way too many people, they go off on all these freaking tangents. We got to get right to the point here. So that's the part of the solution. So let's get to it. The, there's, I've got 10 different key points for you to take notes on today, but the solution to solving this problem, it's right beneath this white rectangle. So let's go. Number one, you need a QER, a what? A QER. What the heck's a QER? You might be asking. Oh, there they all are. I just showed you the, the answers. QER is a quantifiable end result. That's all it is. And if you're thinking in terms of like, what kind of product should I create? What kind of course should I create? You're already, you're already on the wrong track. You're already on the wrong track. The way to start, the, the place to start is to think not what sort of product should I create, but instead think what end result, what end result, oh man, I can't update this. What end result do I want to get for my customer? Because that's what people pay for. They pay for the end result. When you buy a when you buy a flight to go to Fiji, are you buying the flights so you can sit on a flight? Oh, you're buying the flights so you can get to Fiji, right? That's why you're getting on that plane. The planes only make money because of destinations. Planes only make money because of destinations. Just like products only make money because of destinations. So your online course, your online coaching program, your ebook, whatever it is, it needs a destination in mind. Don't just build the plane and say, I'm going to get people on my plane and we're going to fly around. No, it's dumb. It doesn't sell well. I don't think anyone's ever bought a flight ticket just to sit on a plane and fly. I personally don't know anyone. I would never do that unless it's like one of those one-seater, two-seater planes that you can fly around for fun. Those are, those are cool. The end result of that being like a lot of fun. But you got to get clear on an end result first. Once you're clear on an end result, you want to quantify it, meaning you want to be able to add a number to it. Add a number to it. So the reason you want to add a number to it is because, and that might sound weird. What do you mean add a number to it? I mean, add a numerical value to that end result. So for example, if you want to help people lose weight, how much weight? If you want to make help people make money, how much money? If you want to help people get dates on Tinder, how many dates on Tinder? If you want to help people grow tomatoes, how many tomatoes? If you're going to sell someone a box of wheatgrass, well, how much wheatgrass is in the box? Pound, kilogram, how much? Right, add a number. And the reason this is so important is because conscious or sorry, subconsciously, when we pay money for something, we pay, we, we're consciously paying an X amount of money. We're cons consciously paying, let's say, $1,000 for something. In return, we want a number that is equal or greater to than what we consider worth $1,000. 
So if we pay $1,000 for something, we want something that's worth over $1,000. A sale occurs when value exceeds price. That is huge. A sale occurs when value, when perceived value exceeds price. And so you can easily jack up the perceived value by adding a number to your quantifiable end result. So rather than just saying, I'm going to help you have energy, I'm going to help you feel good, I'm going to help you be happy, add a dang number to that. Okay. So for example, how to be happy, help you laugh 10 times a day, laughing 10 times a day. That's huge. Instead of saying, I'm going to help you have more energy, think, what do people do when they have energy? They might run a marathon. So your thing could be like, look, I'll help you have so much energy, you can run a marathon. Now you've attached a number to it, which is you know, 26 miles or something, the marathon. So I'll help you have so much energy that you can run 26 miles. So I'm not saying to do that. That's just an example. But point is you need to be able to add an end result with a number, a numerical value. You're trading a numerical value. They're, they're giving you numerical value of, of currency. You got to give them a numerical value in whatever way you're going to measure that with your end result. Okay. But most people who create courses, they don't even think about the end result. So this alone, if you didn't even know about this whole quantifiable end result thing, this video alone has been worth your time. Everything else here is just going to be bonus, but also very, very, very powerful. Okay. So that's the first thing, quantifiable end result. If you cannot quantify your end result for your customer, you're going to remain having this problem. You're going to remain having this problem. And so you got to, you got to just think like, how do I quantify that result? How do I quantify that result? What can I do to add a number to it? Okay. Just think if, if it's, if it's, uh, if you're helping people produce music, like write music, how do you do that? Well, what you do is you say, I'll help you create a 12 song album, it's 12 songs, put it on an album, or I'll help you get a thousand streams on your latest song, right? You quantified it. If it's helping somebody do paintings and murals, it's like, I'll help you get $500 gigs for your murals, or I'll help you sell your paintings for thousand dollars each. So you quantify that. Got to quantify. Otherwise, it's very difficult to sell. You can sell things without quantifiable end results for sure, but it's way harder. Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you make it harder for yourself? This problem exists in the first place because there's no quantifiable end result for people. So if you want to get rid of that problem, add a quantifiable end result and you'll get rid of that problem, or at least you'll start chipping away at that problem. Here's how to completely get rid of it though. Go after a human need. If you, if your product or your, your, sorry, if your end result is helping them with a human need, like helping them fulfill a human need and it's quantifiable, it's going to sell so damn well. It's going to sell so damn well, you're not going to have a hard time selling that product at all. And by human need, I mean, there's really three major human needs that people spend a lot of money on, especially if there's a quantifiable end result that's clearly displayed. And these three human needs are number one, relationships. How to quantify that? Well, you're going to get one date on Tinder. You're going to get two dates on Tinder. You're going to get three dates on Bumble, whatever. Quantify that. Or you're going to find the soulmate of your life. You're going to find one soulmate. That's how you quantify that human need with relationships. Or you're not going to get a divorce. Your relationship's going to stay together, and therefore you will save half of your net worth. Okay? That's, again, going after human need, and you can quantify it. The second type of human need is with having a beautiful body. People want to feel attractive. People want to look attractive. People want to be healthy, right? So the, the human need of, of, of having an attractive body, it, it's, it's a real human need. That's why people pay for weight loss all the time. And weight loss is the easiest thing to quantify because you literally step on a scale and there are some numbers that pop up. And with those numbers, if they go up, you look worse typically. And if those numbers go down, you look better typically. And if you obviously, if you're skinny right now and you got weight to gain, and the numbers go up, you look better. But most people... If you walk in any Walmart, you'll see this right now. Most people have weight to lose. One in three Americans are overweight. One in five are obese. That's why weight loss, there's so many freaking customers because everyone wants to lose the weight. And it's so quantifiable that it's such a no-brainer for people to pay money to lose X amount of weight. One pound equals how many dollars? You can do the math on that and you can decide what you want to charge for that. So that's the that's the second uh, that's the second human need. The third one is the need for freedom and safety. I've clumped the two in the same because having freedom allows you to be safe because you can like dodge, dodge things. You have the freedom to move around, freedom to dodge certain situations and, and, and that sort of thing and protect yourself with uh, different types of security, whatever. So that comes in the form of finances. Since we live on a financial planet, if you don't have finances, you're screwed. You're on the streets. So the more money you have, typically the more security you have, right? You can literally hire a security guard. You can literally hire us. You can pay for security cameras. You can get a nice, a nice car that has security features. That's very safe. Uh, you can buy the world's safest car, which is a Tesla. You can live in a really safe neighborhood, which are typically rich neighborhoods, right? Like money allows people to experience freedom and safety. So that's the third human need. So if you can help somebody make money, if you can help somebody uh, get clients, if you can help somebody make sales, if you can help somebody even grow their Instagram accounts so that they can then make sales, if you can help 
help somebody, uh, if you can help somebody with, with their business in any way, shape or form, if you can help someone at the end of the day make money, you will make a lot of it. You'll make a lot of money helping other people make a lot of money. And so there's a great example. Someone just started working with me recently. She's an astrologer and she's making a killing doing astrology readings. And instead of just coming to me and, and saying, hey, what do we create? And then I said, oh, let's, let's just help you get more astrology clients so you can predict their futures. No, instead, I'm like, let's set this up so that you can help other people become astrologers. And she all about that. And now we're doing that. So that's a great example of tapping into that human need and really realizing that people pay money to learn how to make money. That's, that's how I learned how to do it. That's how most people are learning how to do it. They're just paying money to learn how to make money, at least getting the help. You can learn how to do it online, but if you want help doing it, it helps to pay for a coach. So that's the second human need is, is income. And that provides that freedom and that, that security. So to recap, you got, you're helping people, the three human needs are either helping people have a beautiful relationship, beautiful connections, beautiful body, beautiful bank account. That's it. And if you quantify that, if you can say, I'm going to help you get one soulmate, or I'm going to help you drop 10 pounds, or I'm going to help you make 10 grand, you're quantifying that human need. So congrats. Next up is really getting clear on what problem you're actually solving for the client. And by getting clear on that problem, if you use this method, you're going to be solving two of your issues, actually. Number one, you're going to be solving the problem of like not being clear on what people actually want to buy. When you're clear on what people actually want to buy, you can then create a product that solves that problem. And at the end of the day, people only buy things to solve a problem. I only bought a blue shirt because I didn't have a blue shirt and that was a problem. Now it's not. I only bought a laptop because I didn't have a laptop and now I do, so it's not a problem. I only bought these uh, cup prote uh, table protectors, cup holders, whatever you call them, sliders, so that I actually didn't buy them. They were a gift, but um, I would have bought them to protect my table because it was a problem that my table was getting these rings on it from putting watery cups on there. Right? I only bought this pen holder because my pens were all over the place. I only bought pens in the first place because I want to write stuff down. Then I switched to mechanical pencils because I had a problem again. Problem was that when I would write upside down with these pens, the ink, because I like to write, lay on my back and do writing, the ink would draw, go down the pen and I couldn't write anymore. So then I got these mechanical pencils and they're way better. So I see you were only buying things to solve a problem. These glasses, I only bought these blue light blocking glasses because I had a problem of looking at the computer screen late at night and I don't want to interrupt my, my sleep. So I bought these blue light blocking glasses, they help me sleep better, right? So what's the problem you're actually solving? When you get clear on that in this way, again, you're gonna solve two problems. The way to get clear on that, the way, the way to get clear on what that problem is for your customers is by going and finding them and talking to them. Might be in a Facebook group, might be on an Instagram hashtag, might be in a, uh, might be on, on a certain YouTube channel, might be on a Reddit forum, right? It might be on a Twitter thread, whatever. You got to find people with this problem and then talk to them about the problem. And when you do this, the two issues you're solving is number one, you're getting clear on the problem that they actually have. So it boosts your confidence knowing that this is actually worth pursuing. And number two, you now know where to find those people because you just talked to them about that problem. So get clear on the problem you're actually solving. A lot of the reason artists, musicians, spiritual mentors, and philosophers aren't selling once they do create a product is because they're not actually addressing a problem. They're just selling knowledge. They're just selling information for the sake of information. I have a philosopher friend here. He wants to put together this philosophy course. And I'm like, okay, well, what's it actually going to help people accomplish? He's like, well, it's going to give them a lot of knowledge. I'm like, okay, so that they can do what? He's like, go through life more knowledgeable. I'm like, okay, well, what problem is it actually going to solve for them? He's like, well, they're just, they're not going to walk around not knowledgeable anymore. I'm like, yeah, but what are they actually going to do with that knowledge? And he's like, see the world differently? And I'm like, okay, but like, what problem is seeing the world differently going to solve for them? He's like, oh, lots of problems. I'm like, okay, what, what problem? And he's like, well, they'll be able to do this, and they'll be able to do that, and they'll be able to do that, and they'll be able to do that. And he listed off like a bunch of different examples. Then, then I'm like, okay, well, do you think that by them knowing, it was, uh, what was he teaching? He's teaching um, sacred geometry. I was like, do you think if they knew sacred geometry, they would be able to like uh, find like, or they would they would be able to be a better partner in their relationships. He's like, oh, for sure. I'm like, okay. Do you think if they knew sacred geometry, they could like maybe make more money with their career? He's like, oh, for sure. Like, do you think if they knew sacred geometry, they could like lose weight? He's like, oh, for sure. So I'm like, there we go. So just tie it back to that. Say that your sacred geometry course is helping them with these three things or one of these three things. It's going to help them lose weight. It's going to help them make money. It's going to help them find a relationship. Tie it back to that end result and let them know that the problem it's going to solve is it's going to solve this problem of them, whatever they say they're, they're solving, whatever they say that they're experiencing. Okay, so you find the problem they're experiencing by talking to them. And then when it comes to you selling your product, you tell them that this product is going to solve that problem. 
just like I did right here. Here's the problem. Creative people can't make a digital product. This video that you're watching right now is going to help you go from vague and abstract to clear and concise so you can get off the sidelines and start making sales with your digital product. Clear and concise, baby. That's how we like it. That's how it needs to be. So once you're clear on the problem, then we move on. Now, ask yourself, what actions, what actions will this person take once I sign up for my program? What are they actually going to be doing physically? Not theoretically, not philosophically, what are they actually going to be doing? Just like I'm karate chopping my hand right now, I'm nodding my head, this is doing, this is an action. Just like I'm recording a video, this is an action. Hey, it, it's, I'm clear and concise when I say that. I'm not saying I'm vibing with the energetic flows of the universe when I'm doing this. No, I'm karate chopping my hand and I'm nodding my head back and forth and I'm speaking. <laughs> and I'm wearing a blue shirt, sitting on a couch with a towel around my waist because I got out of the shower and I didn't want to put pants on. So now, now the secret's out there, you know, right? So it's, 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 I'm, 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 I'm clear and I'm concise and you've got to be this way when it comes to identifying the actions that your students or your customers, or your clients are going to be taking when they sign up with you. Get clear on that because when you're clear on that, when you're clear on that, first off, you help, help you visualize the future of what's going to happen. But second, you can then answer the next question, which is what format makes the most sense for my product? Does it make sense for them to do an ebook or for me to do an ebook? Or does it make more sense for me to do a video course? Or does it actually make more sense for me to do like private one-on-one -on -one coaching? So you got to understand the actions that they're going to take so that you can then get clear on what the format's going to be. And once you're clear on the format, wow, you now have like a, you now have something physical, right? This right here is, I don't know what this is called. It's a plastic paper holder. It allows me to... A drawing board or whatever. This is a physical thing, just like this. This 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 beanie is a physical thing, right? It's a format. The format I'm going to keep my head warm in is with the beanie, or as we see in Canada, a toque. Okay, so this is the format where I'm keeping my head warm. This is the toque. So once you're clear on that, now you can really vi visualize what people are going to be holding in their hands, figuratively speaking. They might print it out, hold it in their hands, but how are they going to use it? Right? So in the same way I'm teaching this on like a whiteboard thing called Miro.com, you got to get clear on what the format's going to be for your delivery of your program or your product, or how are you actually going to help them get this quantifiable end result? How are you going to help them meet this human need? How are, you, how are you going to help them solve that problem? And most clearly, like, how are they going to take action through what format? Most of the time it makes sense to do video, but not all the time. Maybe if you're doing math, it makes more sense to do it written. Or maybe if you're teaching stories, it makes more sense to do it written. But more often than not, the best format I found is a combination of three. So just like right here, we have video. I'm doing some video with myself on video. I'm recording the screen. Those are two videos. And I have written on the page here so I can read and you can follow along. Now, in addition to that, having like a Zoom coaching call once a week works really, really well. So what we do in our academy, in, in, in our Course Creator Academy, where we help vegans and plant-based entrepreneurs create and sell profitable digital products, we offer... PDFs like written stuff so people are sorry yeah written stuff so people can read and see like checklists of everything and then in those checklists they know what to do uh, there's links so when you click on a link it takes to a video and then the video explains more in depth what to do and then if students still need help after seeing the checklist and watching the video then they hop on a coaching call with myself or one of our head coaches and we help them solve the actual problem that they're having so that they can move forward so there's like three formats there's the written format there's the video format and there's a coaching format it comes in the form of a PDF or an MP4 or a YouTube video, and then a Zoom call. So those are the formats that, that we work in. You gotta determine what makes most sense for you, okay? It might even be phone calls. You might just be doing coaching calls over the phone. I don't know, I'll figure out what form format works for you. Next is what are some examples of things that are already selling that are just like this? If you can't find examples of things that are already selling just like this, it's a dangerous territory to enter. It's like walking into a ghost town and expecting you go trick-or-treating. You wanna go trick-or-treating in a ghost town, knock on people's door, trick-or-treat, and you hope they're there. Chances are if it's a ghost town, no one's going to be there. So same with trying to sell something that's never been sold before. Don't try and be super unique like you are in your music and, and, and your art. Like be be unique in, in a, as a person, but as far as your product goes, sell something that, that, that obviously sells. And you're going to find this. You're going to be able to find examples of things that are already selling if you are going after a human need. If you're going after a human need, there's going to be a product out there that already sells it, I guarantee it. So the way to find out if you actually are going after a human need is you'll go on Google or go on YouTube and you'll be able to find examples of things that are already selling. Next is you want to ask yourself in order to create a really like objective, clear and concise product or program that you're going to sell is you got, if you're doing a course, for example, is it going to be time bound? Is it like a three month course or six month course or nine month course or 12 month course or 24 month course or lifetime access? One month course, you gotta, you gotta add a time bound to it. This immediately creates like a, a more, more of a visual of what you're actually offering. So if you say I'm offering a three month coaching program that helps 
musicians launch their first album, I'm like, sweet, I know exactly what you're talking about. Thank you. As opposed to saying like, I help musicians align with align their chakras so that they can be more in tune with the third star rising above the east. I'm like, what does that mean? There's way too many people who talk like that. And it's okay to talk like that inside your program, if that's what your people vibe with. But you don't want to talk like that in marketing. Marketing is like, hey, we've got a three-month program that takes spiritual musicians and helps them launch their first album. Boom. Or we help we help spiritual we help spiritual coaches get their first three paying clients within three months. Or you know we help we help uh, newly we, we help new moms drop fifteen pounds of pregnancy weight in three weeks. Whatever it is, right? But just who do you help? What do you help them with? And how long does it take to help them? Like <laughs> answer those questions and you're good to go. Uh, also, do you have a guarantee? This isn't necessary. You don't need a guarantee. Um, but I just thought I'd throw it in there as a, as like a almost like a bonus point here because if you really want to sell like if you're having a hard time selling if you can't find buyers maybe your offer just isn't that great the way to make a really great offer is just by adding a guarantee for example when people work with us we have the guarantee that you will make 5k with us within your first three months or we'll keep working with you for free until you do that's the guarantee and it really makes it no-brainer for the people who are qualified but we don't work with everyone like a lot of times we get on phone calls with people they don't make it past the first 10 15 20 minutes because it's just not a good fit they're better off learning some more stuff online for free before they come work with us. But if I do feel like we can help them and I know we can get them a result, then we offer them a guarantee. Why would we not? Why would you not offer a guarantee if you're certain that you can help the person get a result? So you can also offer a money back guarantee, but I don't like that because then there's no commitment. People sign up and they're like, oh, I just want my money back. This is too hard. Of course it's hard. That's why you signed up. Try doing it on your own. It's freaking impossible, right? So having a having money back guarantee doesn't really encourage people to commit and go all in and really overcome those triumphs and struggles um, or really experience those triumphs after struggles. But a great guarantee we find is just saying, hey, we'll keep working with you. No extra cost until you do hit 5K within ASAP. You should definitely hit it within three months. If you don't, something's wrong. Let's figure it out ASAP. Okay, that's an example of a guarantee. Next is what's the price? Tell me how much it costs. How much is it? Is there a sliding scale? If it's not a set price, is there a sliding scale? Like for us, is the sliding scale anywhere from $1,000 to $30,000, depending on what level of support you're looking to get. So what's the price? Again, don't be too vague with this and don't say just, oh, it depends. Like what is the sliding scale at least? Next is, do you have a list of deliverables? Like what are they actually getting when they work with you? Let's, let's use the example of they're going to launch an album within their first three months working with you. Okay, so list of deliverables number one is maybe like how to write a really good song workshop. Like, there's a, like let's say there's a module in there called how to write a really good song. How to write really good songs. Number The second list of deliverable might or the second deliverable might be um, how to record the song. This I'm entering unknown territory. I've never talked about this before. <laughs> Third Third uh, deliverable might be like a private community support group for other musicians who are also recording and, and writing their songs. Uh, fourth thing might be like live Zoom calls where you can critique and review their songs, and give them advice. The fifth thing might be uh, might be might be uh, album cover like a, like a like an album cover workshop. How to, how to create an album cover. The sixth list of deliverable thing they might get from me when they work with you is uh, training on how to get more views and more listens on their songs once they are published. Uh, the seventh list of deliverable might be um, might be something like the ultimate at-home studio equipment list, everything you need to, to buy, something like that. Those are, that's just a rough example. Uh, the example we use for our, for our program, or not the example we use, but our list of deliverables is what, what we call an offer stack. It's a stack of everything we offer. We offer a private call with myself. We offer... Uh, calls on every Monday to help with social media. We offer calls every Tuesday to help with, we take care of all the tech for people. Um, the help on Wednesday is for making more sales and getting more clients. And then from Thursday to Sunday is accountability, coaching, and training. So we like get work done together on, on Zoom. And then that's in addition to our full-fledged video course from start to finish. And we've all, we're also offering done-for-you webinars, done-for-you webinar slides, I should say, uh, done-for-you emails, done-for-you uh, product templates, and done for you something else funnels done for you funnels already so that's lifted list of deliverables so now it's, again it's objective it's clear like when you work with us our goal is to help you hit ten thousand dollars a month it's quantifiable the human need there is money the problem is that a lot of people have a hard time 
figuring it out on their own. And rightfully so, there's a lot of different options out there, different conflicting information as well. What actions are they going to be taking? They're going to be taking actions of recording themselves, posting on Instagram, making videos like this one, engaging in a Facebook group and typing on a keyboard to maybe write up a game plan for, for their customers, for the students. And then getting on Zoom calls and doing coaching calls with their students. What format is it in? I already described that. The format is going to be a list of written stuff with videos and coaching. Uh, examples of things that are already selling. Oh, there's so many different examples. You go on Google and type in how to create a course or something, and you'll get tons of examples. Um, uh, time bound, yeah, it's a three-month program. Guarantee is if you don't hit 5K, at least at least 5K in three months, we'll keep working with you uh, until you do. And the price is anywhere from $1,000 to $30,000, depending on what level of support you need and depending on the duration of support. And the way we find out what price or what program makes the most sense for you, what price you would pay is to get you on a call, get you on a call, get you on a phone call and determine what is it you actually want to create. And we'll see if we can actually help you get that result or not. So that's it. Then you give a list of deliverables. Uh, as a pro tip, I mentioned this earlier, be as abstract and as philosophical as you want inside of your program. Like still be that person. Don't like snuff that candle out. But when you're marketing your program, you want to be as clear and tangible as possible. Just like go through this list like I just did. Tell me the quantifiable end result. Tell me the human need it's hitting. Tell me what problem it's addressing or solving. What actions does the person have to take, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, anything else? Do you have any other? Oh, yeah. There we go. Bang. If you do need help creating your own product, your own digital product, your own ebook course or coaching program and, and making some sales with it, uh, we can actually make it. We can actually get on a call together and see if working together makes sense. If it does, cool. I'll show you what it looks like to work together. And if it doesn't, all good. I'll at least give you a roadmap that you can follow so you can crush it on your own. Uh, to get on that call with me, you just got to go to coursecreatorcall.com and you'll be taken to a page that looks like this. And then on this page, if you scroll down, you actually see what our students are saying, uh, some of our students at least, and you'll be able to get an idea of what we can do for you. And then you can click on here and let us know what sort of uh, diet and lifestyle you currently follow and then answer a few more questions that we can get on a call. So that's that. Um, blah, 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 blah. I think we covered everything. Hope this video was helpful. The goal of it, again, was to help you go from abstract and kind of vague to being very clear and concise with what you're actually offering. So hope this was helpful. If it was, great. Peace out. Much love. And uh, maybe talk to you on a call soon or at least hear from you somewhere on social media. All right. Ciao for now. Peace. Bye.